There we are, I'll just see that you press the button. I've got to read out something before we start, um, which so. is... Yeah. Well, this is getting worse, isn't it? Okay, well, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Um, it is an actual, I didn't get to do this um, earlier in the um, conference yet, which is give my appreciation for Amelia Womack, who's our brilliant deputy leader. <laughs> Travelling the country, um, visiting local party campaigns, and trying to live off train food, and it's really, really tough. And if only there was a party campaigning to make our trains better. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. She's she's in store. She's been on Deputy Dino for five years. Um, she's so knowledgeable about so many things. Um, her speech now is going to be absolutely brilliant, uh, and I can't wait to hear her speak. Um, Amelia, thank you so much for all the work you do, and looking forward to hearing
place in politics and the political system and it's right at its heart. Of course there's a problem with the metaphor. There's a reason that's taken so many years of campaigning to make this breakthrough. Just like there's a reason that nine times out of ten you walk out of that arcade with nothing to show for your effort. <laughs> we know what the game is designed so the arcade ultimately wins. We just like we know that we operate in a system that is stacked against us. The machinery of the UK, from the way that we elect our MPs, to the way the media is run, to our education system, has been carefully constructed over centuries to keep wealth and power in the hands of the elite. But politics isn't a game. It's how we change the lives of people across this country and planet for the better. Yet our current political system is badly broken. And the way it continues to try to squeeze an incredible breadth of views into a two-party monopoly is the most striking example. In the last, if the last year alone has told us anything, it's that we're in desperate need of a modern democratic system. We and Her Majesty's opposition sat on opposite benches, jeering at each other. For years, this system has tried to handle Brexit and it has failed embarrassingly. We have seen so many Labour and Conservative MPs unhappy with their own party, but unable to break away. Does ever anyone even remember Change UK? <laughs> <laughs> even the Tories are failing to hold together a majority in a system creaking under the strain of political upheaval. Our archaic democracy needs to be revived with a truly proportional system where every vote and every voter matters. Never have known the dark money behind the DUP's role in the Leave campaign. 
But all too often, financial pressures, powerful interests, and outdated regulation mean that we, we are badly let down by our press. For years, a media manufactured migration crisis made the front pages on a weekly basis, while the climate crisis received only passing mentions. For years, Farage has enjoyed a safe seat on too many current affairs programmes, while the Greens have had to fight tough and nail for fair representation. The first BBC Question Time since our amazing European election results did, however, feature Alexander Phillips after years of saying that they don't tend to invite MEPs. The bad news is that we didn't get the chance to hear from our new Green MEP, Alexandra Phillips, about her campaigns for a European Green New Deal, opposing Brexit and pushing for an EU-wide living wage, but instead they, they invited the Brexit Party's Alexandra Phillips. And I believe uh, she's only got one policy, and I think we've heard enough about that. <laughs> media coverage and advertising on social media. A true democracy demands better. A media that's at its core works on behalf of people, not private interests, not Rupert Murdoch, and not peddling hatred and lies. A media that doesn't belittle and speak over women, people of colour, people with disabilities, trans and non-binary people who should be being heard in our national conversation. A media where pay discrimination is, isn't used as a way to make women feel like they're less important than their male co-presenters who do the same job. <laughs> and speaking of belittling women, the battle for equality is still real and our broken political system is holding things back. Just one MP with an axe to grind can, ban, can delay a ban on upskirting. Reproductive rights in Northern Ireland are being systematically denied. Women continue to be massively underrepresented in political life. From banknotes to boardrooms, women and non-binary people are still fighting for equality. Last year it was revealed that only 9.7% of executive FTSE 350 positions were held by women, a figure that had actually dropped since the previous year. 80 out of the FTSE 350 companies were revealed in November 2018 to have just one or no women on their boards. And these figures are even more dire when you consider how poorly women of colour, women with disabilities and LGBTIQA plus people are represented. We stand on the shoulders of giants when it comes to the fight for, for gender equality and we mustn't allow our broken political system to get in the way of yet more progress. That's why I'm reaffirming today the Green Party's commitment that we must have equality for women on boards of businesses, in the Houses of Parliament and every aspect of public life. Milestones. 
I recently fought a by-election in my hometown of Newport in South Wales. Here, the Welsh Labour government spent over £100 million on plans to build a motorway to bypass the city. The final cost of that motorway would have been around £1.6 billion pounds if it had gone ahead. As Greens, we worked with local campaigners, spreading the message that new roads bring new cars. We thought we couldn't continue to use a, a 1960s transport vision to deal with a 21st century problem. We gave the city a positive vision of a Green New Deal, where investment in public transport would be put ahead of road building. Labour won the election, promising the new road. But this week, finally, Labour have announced a U-turn on that plan. The M4 bypass will be scrapped. Big, bold, and building from the grassroots. 
<laughs> Conference, I'm proud of everything we've achieved together. But this is just the beginning. We have an entire country to change, an entire system to transform, an entire planet to protect. As Greens, we have a big vision. So let's get out there and let's do this.